Hello Year 9. This is the first video that I'm putting out for your year group for your remote learning and your first job is to pause the video, find a song that you really like, it should last about four to five minutes. That's the time limit you have for the next little activity. So find a song and pause this video. Okay, you should have your song. Um, you've got until that song finishes to do the following. You need to write down all the 10 types of energy that you have to remember for your exam. You need to write down equations for kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. You need to sketch a Sankey diagram for an energy saving light bulb. If a lamp transfers 100 joules in 20 seconds, you need to calculate the power. Okay, bonus points for if you can write down the units for gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy as well. So pause the video and try and answer those four questions before your song finishes. Okay, um, here are the types of energy. So we've got magnetic, kinetic, heat, light, gravitational potential energy, chemical, sound, electrical, elastic potential energy, and nuclear. Most kids hate learning GCSE energy names. Um, you can use thermal instead of heat if you wish, but it doesn't really fit the, um, the rhyme. We've got our two equations, kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. 0.5 half times m mass times v squared, velocity squared, and GPE, mass times gravity times height. My unit for kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy are joules. The unit for mass is the kilogram. The unit for velocity is meters per second. The unit for gravitational field strength, strength of gravity, are newtons per kilogram. And the unit for height is the meter. Here we've got a Sankey diagram. 100 joules of electrical energy going in, 75 joules coming out usefully as light, and 25 joules, 25 joules as wasted heat energy. 75 plus 25 equals 100. To get the marks on this, the input energy has to equal the total output energy. Okay, and the light arrow, this has to be much bigger than the heat. It is a useful, the useful energy is much bigger, that proportion, it's an efficient bulb. If it was a normal incandescent bulb, it's an old-fashioned bulb, the light energy arrow would be much smaller than the heat energy arrow. Um, and then our calculation, we've got power equals energy divided by time, where power equals 100 joules divided by 20 seconds. 100 divided by 20 is 5 watts. You can write that as 5 Ws. Um, okay, so most of you in Year 9 science lessons uh, have been looking at convection and conduction. So the first thing I thought we'd do would be to just recap those two processes. Okay, so convection and conduction are both ways of transferring heat energy. Okay, I've got two diagrams, this diagram showing conduction and this diagram showing a convection current. Okay, now I want to first talk about the conduction diagram. I don't like this conduction diagram. I hate it. I hate it. But it's really difficult to get an animation that shows the vibration of the particles and has them touching. Because when we draw a particle diagram, the particles should be touching. If they don't touch in your exams, you'll drop points. So these should touch. But the process is quite simple. We've got a heat source here, and this heat source is transferring energy to these particles. It causes them to vibrate more vigorously. And if they're vibrating more, they're going to hit their neighboring particles more often. That causes these particles to get some energy, which makes them vibrate more vigorously. And that process happens again and again and again and again the neighbouring particles, and that vibration is passed along down through the material. It has to be in a solid. It has to be in a solid because the particles need to be close enough for that vibration to be transferred. Convection, on the other hand, has to take place, in this case, in a gas or in a liquid, because the particles need to be able to flow. Okay. In convection, we have a heat source, in this case a candle, and this is showing how heat is changing. I'm going to link a video to how this particular setup works. It's a lovely little video, video by Verita Siren. But we've got a candle here and it's got a heat source. It's giving out lots of heat. And that heat is being transferred into particles here. These particles are gaining more energy, so they're moving quicker. And if those particles move quicker, they're going to take up more space. 
If the particles have taken up more space, then the density of that bit of air is going to go down. And if it's got a low density, the density is lower here than here, they're going to rise. And that process happens. Now, you need to be really careful with the language you use while explaining um, convection currents. Because it's very easy to fall into the trap of saying heat energy is transferred to the particles, the particles have more energy, so they get bigger, which is not the case. That will lose you marks in your exam. The particles do not change size. The space between them gets bigger, and the space between them can get smaller, but the particles themselves don't change size. It's really important you have that firmly in your heads. Okay? So, a little comparison between the two. We've got conduction and convection. Conduction is the process by which vibrating particles transfer energy to neighbouring particles. It can only really happen in solids because the particles need to be really close to each other to transfer that vibration. The vibration of the particles causes them to collide. It causes them to collide frequently. And we've got a diagram here. Again, the particles aren't touching. But here we've got the heat source. These particles are vibrating really vigorously and it's passing that vibration onto the next ones. And this process is moving, moving along and along and along this, this pipe. Okay, and it'll keep happening until all the particles are vibrating by the same amount. And you can't, um, and the energy going into the pipe from the Bunsen burner is the same as the energy leaving the pipe. Convection current is where the, there's energetic particles, they move away from hotter regions to cooler regions. It can only happen in fluids, and fluids got special meaning in physics. It means a liquid or a gas. Okay, both are fluids in physics. Okay, liquids and gases. And it can happen in those because they can flow. The particles can flow and move around the container. And I've got a picture of just a room with a convection current being formed by a hot radiator. So we have a hot radiator. This transfers energy to the particles next to it. These particles will start to move quicker. If they are moving faster or quicker, they are taking up more space. Therefore, the air next to the radiator becomes less dense. The less dense air rises, okay, and is pushed um, by the particles behind it, okay, by the air behind it, and it starts to form this convection current, okay. As it moves throughout the room, it's going to lose some energy. And when it loses energy, the particles become cooler. If they've lost energy, they will not be moving as quickly. If the particles are not moving as quickly, then the air of those particles becomes more dense. When the air is more dense, it will start to fall, and it forms this loop, this cycle of moving hot air and cold air. Okay. Um, what would be a great use of your time would to be make a spider diagram or a little mind map on the conduction process and the convection process. You could make a Cornell sheet instead. Um, but some kind of summary sort revision task. I'm going to leave a link to BBC Bite Size about conduction and convection in the video description. Um, my year 10s already know, but I am also, just to keep myself a little bit stress free, because it's quite relaxing, I am trying to draw a picture once a day and upload some of them to my YouTube videos. This is my second picture. Okay, it's still a little ropey. It's not very good. It is only number two. Okay, it's much better than my first, which was on my year 10 video. There's me, little self portrait, and there's me teaching convection and conduction. Okay, um, I hope everyone is well. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.